So we're back at the Classic Car Workshop with Nathan. Um, after a bit of a debacle with piston rings, um, he's gonna help me fit those uh, and put the head together, and then we should be able to put the engine all together today. Bet you do this by hand, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do have expanders, but they're just useless. We have also already de deburred the edge with the diamond file. Okay. Cool. Had I put them on right previously? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good, good. So we feed these through the bottom of the barrel. Yes. And then drop the barrel on. Yes. Got ya. Okay. That should just give us a diagram. In terms of where the ring should go. Yeah. I think you gave me a diagram yeah. before, which was yeah, like, go off that. these want to be opposite. Yeah. And yeah. then the other one, at an adjacent angle to those. Okay. It's, it's hard to do. By the time you start pushing it down, it's like, yeah, yeah. it's like all over the shop. <laughs> so again, top compression, this side, second compression ring, that side, and oil ring, kind of there. Just see, make sure you can see this. Yes, you can. Excellent. Yeah, it also didn't occur to me till afterwards that I should put oil on the rings. Yeah, some people say you should use this or use that. I just use the liquid that they're actually going to be running in. Some people use transmission fluid. It's all manner of different approaches. I guess it burns off quite quickly anyway, doesn't it? Yeah, correct. And which is the front of this barrel? If this is number one, so yeah, this is front that here. Be the front, yeah. Okay. They're horrible, those, um, the ones where you clamp them down. Oh yeah, useless. Here's what it looks like. Hmm. You think it's not tight enough or too tight? Or? We'll have a look at it on the piston. It's quite annoying because... Because it looks like there's a little bit of damage on the bottom here. Oh really? Just a, nothing consequential, okay. it might just affect our footing. Okay. Maybe that wasn't me when I was trying to put the other ring in. Probably was. So your circle ups are all correct? Yep. Easier. Is that going to come up? No, so you've got to take the con rod off, put them through the top, and then fit the circle clip on. Yeah, like a uh, Porsche. Which is not a problem. Because, yeah. <laughs> Never thought about that. <laughs> Caught me off. Yeah, I've always spin around a little bit. 
Yeah, that's the trouble I was having when I was trying to put it in. It kind of you think you got it right, but by the time you've so got it halfway in, it's like. Old school ways of doing it, and this. Do they not move around once they're in the engine? Yeah, typically they do. Do go through here. Yes. Or you could put them in from the bottom. But you wouldn't want to put them in from the bottom. Would that be harder? That'd be impossible. Well, I think sometimes you can sit them up and then. Yeah, but it'd be pretty difficult. You'd have yeah. to take the crank back out to then put it on and then. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure of the workshop process, but on a Porsche. You fit the conrod, and then you sit this over, and then you trip the circle. Oh, yeah, okay. But that's with circle applies. He's a snap ring, so not so easy. I mean, the engineering tolerances are so tight. Aren't they? Mm. Okay, so we've got just enough. You can see the circle clip yeah. front. Always to the left like a graph. Front we labelled here. Oh, your cone rods backwards. Is it? One and one's not lined up. Oh my god. Oh, that's because I put it on afterwards. There's, yeah. a, there's a kind of like in frustration after I finish. I just like get it back together and just leave it. small pick as well. Didn't want to damage the... Bottom, great. Yeah. And one's home. Yep. So... Should be good to drop in. Okay. Do we want to clean up the... Uh, Crankers first on the journey. Yeah, should we drop this on a stand so we can yeah, flip out? Sure. Okay, so we have three tail end float, which is good. Okay. Yeah. Do the second one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That was at the front. 
corner of number opposite the camshaft. Yep. So we are good. So now, get the circle up in. Right. So, front track fronts. So you can see these bits of hose really help to yeah. just guide it. Yeah. Yeah, please, so we don't flip around, yep. So all of our numbers are correct. Is that a broad tool, is it? No, it's a 3D printed homemade one. Ah, got you. Based on the original fit tool. Cut, yeah. So what I try and do is find fit, the old fit tools, and then try and recreate them. Got yeah. Do you do the CAD yourself? Sorry? You do the CAD? Yeah. Learning it as I go. Okay. Yeah, of course. Hang on, we'll get them close for us. We'll get them seated. Ideally, you want to be supporting the head as well. Okay. Not that that will matter for what you're doing. So there you go. You want to give one a little bit and then. It's not. So and then switch over to the other one. Okay. So yeah, you are nice right. and evenly. No, my back's going to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm <laughs> completely tightening. This is ridiculous. Just the angle that you have to bend down slightly for. Yeah. Yeah, so I think you definitely need to have a taller end stand. Yeah. If you get some steel and bring it in, we can soon tack it up there. Or just a better back. <laughs> yeah. Right, so those are torqued. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, Okay, sanity, we always go through a double check again. Yeah, always do that. So on more modern stuff, we typically will um, check a Conroe bolt stretch to make sure that they've stretched the right amount, yeah. but that's not the specified way of doing it on yeah. these. So. Let's just try and get some of this black torque clay stuff. All right, spins nice and free-ish. Yeah. <laughs>